Hello and welcome back to Sprite Guard Plays Hyper Rogue. So we had a little bit of a mistake in the last episode, uh, and uh, now we are right back at the beginning, but that is good because this is an update. We have version 8.2 now. Uh, there is a bunch of new stuff. We're going to try and check it out uh, as simply and smoothly as we can. We still have the giant ivy to take on. We still have the princess quest to take on. Still a lot of unfinished business, but we're just going to uh, start with the simplest thing, which is there is a new 30 treasure land. So that is where we are going to be heading first. And I think we're going to get most of that 30 treasures in the icy land. Uh, because as I said in the last series, it's actually, it's, the Orb of Flash is uh, the most versatile orb in the game. And just has the most different uses. And it's also one of the hardest to hold on to. It's one of the ones that uh, you can be forced to use it very easily. And so having those really easily available, really abundant, is going to make things easier for us later in the game. There is also, uh, there's some new modes. There is Chaos Mode, which uh, Fulger spoke of very highly, and uh, sounds interesting, but I decided not to take a look at it because it doesn't really sound like um, something that is really exciting to me. Basically what it is is uh, lots of lands all kind of intertwined together with no walls. Which I think is a really cool idea, but one of the things that I really, really like about this game, one of the things that kind of has driven my my coming back to this game and coming up with ideas for videos is um, there's this sense of kind of organization in this game that has come, uh, especially since... Uh, version 7 where you kind of you go from one place to another and you always have these objectives of you know you're going first to here and then to there and unlocking this to unlock that there's always this sense of progression that is very strong in this game and uh, chaos mode just doesn't seem like it quite has as much of that. Um, I haven't I haven't played it a ton, and it's probably it's worth. You know, I'm I'm probably going to regret saying anything about it before playing it. Um, but it just it didn't it didn't speak out to me. It did not seem like something that compelled me to play it, and. I just, I, I really want to kind of get back into the game, look at just the things that have been added to the base game. So we have our 25 ice diamonds we can get out of here, and uh, start gathering up some spice. Spice is pretty easy to collect. And we actually have uh, this crossroads right here. I do want to stay near that. Now, um, the, the dipping rule, I don't think... I actually, I had Fulger explain the dipping rule to me uh, just the other day, and I think it does not affect anything if uh, we have less than 10 treasures. So we can pretty easily just grab these uh, in the simplest way possible. And uh, the goal is going to be, oh, uh, we are going to need to get into the Land of Eternal Motion and get our Orbs of Safety. Uh, but for now, we have uh, 30 treasures. And so if we take a look at the overview, we should have access now... Let's see... Warped Coast requires 30 treasure. And uh, I think... I'm not, I'm not sure... Um, Let's see, 25 plus 5 is 30, so it should be unlocked. But I'm only seeing uh, starting lands. Ah, oh, here we go. 
the Warped Coast. So this is where we were in the uh, in the previous episode. This is where we ended up dying. Let's see if we can do a little bit better. So the Warped Coast, the uh, the coastline is a straight line, uh, but everything else is. Uh, is very warped and very different and I am trying to figure out how to battle these ratlings and it's very tricky because you don't have a ton of, of um, control because they because you can't stand still and wait for them it you have kind of not a good way of dealing with kind of the parity changes of uh, see this this rattling keeps being two steps away from us and it's very difficult because in the um, in the regular terrain you can kind of make steps that will have have an effect of I, I, it, it has to do with this whole idea of, of parity, of how many steps does it take for a monster to get to you. If a monster is exactly one step away from you, you can't move toward it. And so, uh, in, in the regular grid, you do have an option. You can kind of move in such a way that you will change the, the distance between you and a monster. So even without waiting, you can get close to a monster who's a step away. Here, I'm not seeing how to do that. It seems like uh, this this land is just so different that I can't figure out how to do kind of the most basic things. And that is that is really kind of amazing but also quite difficult. And so I think that's why I ended up getting uh, just so badly wrecked in the, uh, the previous one, is just because it, it so defies all of the intuitions that I've built up in this game. So here we actually, we can have an example. There, I moved like that, and uh, the monster just came right up next to me because I could move to a space that was still one space away from him. And then... Now I have to figure out like that, and that, and that, and then like that, and that. So I, I'm very comfortable with combat in the regular grid. It's something that's very familiar to me. And so something like the Ratlings that bring in a slight variation are not too difficult to deal with, but as soon as I get into the Warped Coast, that suddenly becomes much more difficult. So let's get some of... Ah, these are trees. So the treasures, I guess, are the corals. So let us see if we can gather some of those. And let's see if we can, let's see, so uh, none of these boats are up against the shore, so I'm guessing we have to get a rattling boat. Okay, so that worked. Um, I did not intend to use the orb of flash like that, but it worked. So let's get into a boat and see if we can figure out how to do this. So I'm looking, I'm, I'm trying to see if there is a cell that I can move to that will keep the distance from the rattling the same. And I'm not seeing one. And so I'm really not sure how to even start fighting this guy. And I guess, you know, one thing to do is to kind of come around here and see one, two, Three, so that guy's an odd number of steps away, too. What about this guy? One, two, three, four, five. So, yeah, I, there's, there's some insight into combat in this game that I'm just... Ah! Ah, there I see it. 
That's what the trees are for. Let's see. Oh, can't move between tri triangular trees or cells. So that's that is a difficult thing to remember, but I think it's something that we can deal with. I think that it is something that we can learn gradually. So this looks like an okay opportunity to fight. And then we withdraw, and withdraw further. I'm trying to figure out the connectivity of this grid if it's... Trying to figure out, like, if it resembles anything I'm familiar with, because it feels very much like a square grid. And as I'm looking at it, I'm kind of realizing that, yeah, from a heptagon you can only move to another... Uh, from a heptagon, you can only move to a triangle, and from a triangle, you can only move to a heptagon. And so that is why I was kind of noticing the parity problems, is because this really is like a black and white checkerboard, where you're just not able to get to certain cells on an even numbered step. And I just, I'm going to keep trying, because there are lands in this game that, uh, that have these, um, triangles meeting each other like this. And so I'm just, I'm so used to treating those as adjacent hexagons. But, uh, I think gradually, gradually we'll get used to it and, uh, become more able to navigate this world. Now, because of the kind of the shape of the warped coast, I'm kind of wondering if I'm going to be able to uh, find my way around a little bit more easily. And right away I'm finding out probably not. Let's see. These guys will move if I wait. So I can actually uh, wait for that guy to come up there and then let's see. This guy we can fight, and then this guy we have to wait for, there we go. And into the boat, there we go, that is our second coral. So this is a pretty challenging land, but I think I'm starting to figure out what is needed. Now, in the sea, it's much less clear how I would deal with that, because there aren't trees to cut down. And so I'm not really sure what I should do uh, if I just need to immediately land and uh, cut down a tree, or if there is some other way of stopping. And it looks like that rattling may end up getting into a boat. Yeah, that definitely looks like the case. So we're just going to have to, let's see, we are on different colored cells, so uh, we can actually fight each other directly there. That's fine. We actually only need one more treasure. And a uh, new achievement, Rattling, collect ten corals. So that is uh, the Warped Coast. Now, I believe there was another land added. Let's take a look at the overview. So let's see, we are currently in the ocean, we have the Warped Coast, which is still not showing as unlocked, but uh, we have the Ten Corals, and the Orb of the Warp is available to us. So that is something that uh, we should keep an eye out for. So I'm going to... Ah, there was a Crossroads Type 4 was added, which requires 200 treasures. And that is a land without walls, which I'm really excited to see. I think that's a really interesting idea. And it is it is something that I had kind of been thinking about because there was a glitch, I think in like version 6 or version 7, where sometimes you would get lands without walls, and it was a cool effect. And there was some kind of odd glitchiness in, in certain lands coming up next to each other. 
but it it ended up working it you know in in as far as a glitch can work it was just it was it was two lands kind of butting up against each other and it, it had a kind of eerie feel to it that I really liked so uh, the Rose Garden is actually something else that we want to look out for and we need 60 treasures and that area uh, sounded very difficult sounded extremely difficult based on the blog post uh, that is an area where we're going to have a lot of restrictions on movement similar to the whirlpool we're going to have a lot of things uh, causing trouble for us. We have this uh, intertidal zone here, so we can just actually wait for the tide here and follow it in and see if this is someplace that we want to go. And as we get closer, the water will start to move faster. And we'll be able to move a little bit faster, and then it slows down once we get back, and we can see it's the Mirrored Land, which is a pretty easy land to navigate, so I think that that is where we want to go. So we'll just wait for the uh, water to come up to the, sh the edge, and uh, we may as well, well, yeah, I mean, Mirror Shards are handy enough, I think, gathering up treasures here. It won't do us a great deal of harm, and uh, could end up being useful. This Orb of Flash might save us from some eagles. Uh, we can play a little bit more recklessly, at least until we use it up. And we're already at six treasures. You know, I remember when this land was, like, impossibly difficult for me. And I, I remember when I had to, like, really cheese this land, and I was just never sure whether or not I was going to make it out alive, largely because of the eagles. Um, and they, they are still an enemy that I find a little bit difficult to deal with. They're, I, I feel like I am much better at dealing with them now than I was in the past. But uh, they're still they're still not trivial, and they're still I want to there I I want to kind of be aware that they are a potential threat. So that is our tenth mirror shard. We're not going to grab any of those, which means we're probably going to be using up our flash pretty soon. But we have found our way to a crossroads, so we can just use that up, making our way over there. And we have not even seen any eagles in all that time, so we have we have made it out safely. We can gather up the uh, the rest of the spice that we need, and that will get us to 55. So let us see about doing that. And uh, those sandworms, I I kind of don't give them the respect they deserve. Um, I remember having a run not too long ago, though the runs are getting so long that, you know, two runs ago was quite a while ago. But still, I remember losing a run not too long ago to um, not giving enough respect to the... I don't remember if it was the sandworms or the rock snakes. The sandworms I'm much more confident with, but I know that kind of one of my biggest weaknesses in games is I tend to not give enough respect to things that I know how to deal with. If I feel safe around something, even if it's not safe, I still have a tendency to kind of act as though it was no threat at all. And that is not a good idea if you are trying to survive. So we can use this thumper. We do need um, Phoenix Feathers. I don't know if we want to go for 25 Phoenix Feathers again. I think I want to focus on uh, making our way into the Rose Garden. But we are going to need to save, and I believe we have actually been going for quite some time at this point. And so I want to be a little bit cognizant of the time, 
And uh, we may have to continue our explorations in another uh, episode. I don't know yet. I'm kind of going to play it by, a little bit by ear. Uh, because I'm feeling pretty on top of things. I'm feeling pretty together. There are some times when I'm just feeling a little bit out of it and I want to do a shorter episode to kind of protect the the series. To protect my myself from uh, getting getting killed by something just that I'm not paying attention to. So I'm going to check the time here. And uh, I think a big... Oh boy, we've been going for 20 minutes. So I kind of want to save myself on Sunday editing. Uh, so I'm going to wrap it up here, but in the next episode. And I think it's possible that it will come out sooner. Kind of depends on uh, what order I do things in. I, I have not yet decided how exactly I want to finish out the rest of my day. But uh, for now, we are going to call a break, and in the next episode, we will go on the hunt for a rose garden. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Zeno, for another wonderful update. Uh, and most of all, have a great rest of your day.